Hey there, Segudo golfers. Tom Segudo here, PGA member, founder of Segudo Golf. You need to get a grip, and you aren't taking grip seriously enough. I'm going to show you in this episode how important the grip is by just changing my left hand position. It's ridiculous. It's going to blow your mind. Why don't we take the grip more seriously? A lot of you just lackadaisically put your hands on the club and don't think about it. And then you wonder why you're inconsistent. You know what? You're inconsistent because your grip is bad. Your grip is wobbling around your swing. You don't even have a secure hold on it. And yet this, this grip right here, our hands are our only connection with the club. That's it. I don't just move the club with my mind. I don't move it like Darth Vader, okay? You need to get a grip. You need to get a grip. Subscribe to this channel if you want the best ball striking of your life because I'm gonna help you get there in a body friendly and simplified manner. Now let's talk about how you can get a grip on your life. Grip is one of the most overlooked parts of the golf swing. It's like one of the most fundamental questions in life. How important is the golf grip? How does 15 minutes save me 15% or more on my car insurance? Why do we park in driveways and drive on parkways? When someone yells free bird at a concert, are they really just trying to sell their pet bird? You see, it's important life questions like these that we have to answer when taking a golf grip. Now, you don't care enough about your grip, and I can tell because when I go on a driving range, I see so many bad grips, it blows my mind. So today, we're gonna start off by one, getting a grip. Get a grip over the club, you get a grip over your life, you have a lot more fun, and then your face looks like this. Two, I'm gonna show you how the grip impacts your swing using a variety of grip positions. Strong, neutral, weak, and you're gonna see how my swing will change and my ball flight through the different grip positions. Last but not least, you're gonna learn how the top hand of the grip is essential for crispy iron contact. Let's get started. Okay, Segudo golfers, let's get started by getting a grip on our life, okay? You haven't had a grip on your life because you haven't had a grip on the club, and golf is life, which means that the grip we're gonna get on their club is your life, so you've gotta guard this grip with your life. It's gotta be secure, it's gotta be a nice, happy marriage. It's not going anywhere. In fact, I liken golf to a marriage. If you're getting over that golf shot, it's like walking down the aisle, and if it's not secure, and you're not confident going down that aisle, then I don't know what you're doing getting married. Now, I'm still single, so I haven't figured this out yet, but, I've seen a lot of things on the lesson two. All right, let's get the grip all squared away. Here we go. Start off, hold the club out in front of you like this. Make sure the club face is perpendicular to the ground. The club face determines the ball start direction. If you want the ball to start at the target, I suggest your club face points at the start direction you intend at the target. That's a mouthful. Club face, start direction. Club face perpendicular to the ground means that your club face is pointed at the target. Now notice how my right hand is holding the club out on the shaft like this. That's perfectly normal, you can do that to start. We need to have this same club face position when we start taking our grip. Now we begin with the lead hand. If you're right handed, it's your left hand. Say hello, left hand. It's a really excited left hand. To show you more easily, I've removed my glove. Your left hand grip's gonna go from the base pad of the first finger to just below the pinky pad right here, a slight diagonal line, okay? And then we fold the fingers first like this. Fingers first, not palm. Palm bad, fingers good, palm bad, fingers good. No, 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 stop. Fingers good, palm bad, fingers good, palm bad. Okay, get that, fingers good. Now roll the hand over top. You're gonna create a beautiful crease right here. See that thumb and your hand connected together? The, that crease is a V, it's called a V or a crease, whatever you wanna call it, you can give it a nickname. That is gonna point through your right shoulder to right ear area, somewhere in here. Very important. I'll get into that in a little bit, but just for right now, let's get the basics of the grip down. Right hand grip. All of the base pads of your hand. Just like so. Now we can place it on the grip. And fingers, once again, not palm, fingers. Not palm, fingers. Fingers fold first. And if you're one of those people who likes to overlap, here you go. We've got a nice special slot right here because God designed our hands for golfing. He's got a sick sense of humor. He likes to watch us wallow in pain on a golf course. It's hilarious. There we go. Overlap, interlock. Overlap, 
interlock. This finger right here is not laying off, the first finger on your right hand, not laying off the side, not doing a trigger thing, right against the other parts of your hand. Everything's working together. Now the right hand, once you've got the finger placement, we fold the right hand over top of that left hand thumb. Lead hand thumb gets covered by the trail hand. This is crucial because you're gonna find out how the right hand is used to really compress the golf ball at impact. So right hand on top. What you notice here is the V's are parallel to each other. So this crease and this crease are parallel. That indicates that the, your hands are married together. It's a really nice, happy marriage. They're working together. You'll see about two and a half to three knuckles from this point of view on your left hand and on your right hand you just want to make sure that right hand is over that thumb. If I see this, if I see that thumb, I'm coming out to get you. I, I just have no patience left for bad golf grips. None. All right. None of this. None of this. The right hand's got to be on top. I cannot stress this enough. All right. Now that you got this lovely golf grip, and if it feels really weird, that's good. You made a change, and your golf grip should feel secure. You've got to make sure that your grip is securely fastened. It's not going to go anywhere. And put the belt loop around the hip and just fasten and pull to tighten, okay? Secure meaning it's not going to go anywhere. It's not like I'm squeezing the life out of it. It's nice and light grip pressure. Round a 4 out of 10. Grip pressure is a whole other topic, but 4 out of 10. I'm not squeezing it to death where you can see the whites of my knuckles. I'm not barely holding it that I'm throwing it down range. Just a little bit. But everything's secure. When you swing back, you shouldn't feel the grip wobble at all. If it's wobbling, you're not gonna know where the club's gonna come into the ground. And yet you're wondering why you're not consistent. Well, if you're wobbling, this is going everywhere. And then an impact, where's it gonna go? I don't know. Rumor has it, somebody's still trying to figure out why their grip is wobbling. I don't want you to be like that at all. So, you've got a beautiful golf grip. Let's hit some shots with your new grip. Here we go with some warm up swings, new grip. Now I'm gonna make sure when I look at my grip, First thing I'll make sure is one, it's secure. Two, right hand's on top. Three, make sure that my, I'm seeing two and a half to three knuckles. Now let's make some swings. That felt really good. Let's do that again because it feels so good. Oh yeah, that feels even better. Hey. Make sure you watch that weight forward episode if you want to hit it like this. It's really critical. All right, once you've hit enough shots where you get comfortable with this new grip, let's now dive in to talking about strong versus neutral versus weak. Let's get started. When we talk about strong versus neutral versus weak, what does it mean in the golf grip? It doesn't have anything to do with power. It's all due with your, tr your lead hand position and how much it is turned over on the golf grip. So for example, this is a strong grip. The lead hand is turned over a lot and then the crease is pointing through your right shoulder if you're right-handed. It's pointing way through your right shoulder. You can see about three or four knuckles on your lead hand. A strong grip promotes hooks, draws, and a closed club face at impact but it also can give you a little yardage booster because it promotes a bigger wrist hinge. So a much bigger wrist hinge at the top, a bigger lever for you bringing into the ball, a lot more power potential. But you've gotta be aware of the hooking possibilities as I am one of those people too who has had a really strong grip. You notice the strong grip forms a natural cupping between your left hand and your arm. This cupping can cause you some issues in the swing as we'll discuss in a little bit. The strong grip promotes a lower inside takeaway, and there's nothing wrong with an inside takeaway, but on the way down in your downswing, it can also promote a hook because it can cause you to swing too much in to out, as I'll show you in a little bit. A neutral grip, this is the one that I recommend. This is where you see two knuckles to two and a half knuckles on your left hand, and the V points through your right ear, somewhere around there. This is the most balanced grip and provides a square club face at impact 
which means the ball is going to target more often. It also provides for the right amount of inside in your takeaway, as you'll see in just a little bit. A weak grip, not to be confused with being weak or powerless, a weak grip can be plenty powerful. Ben Hogan had a weak grip. This is where your lead hand, V, points through your nose or anywhere toward, more toward the target. A weak grip has a tendency to promote an open club face, meaning the ball is going to start right. It also has a tendency to promote more of an outside takeaway with the hands. A weak grip tends to be used by players who like to fade the ball. It promotes more of an out to end swing pattern, which produces that fade shot. It also produces a nice straight shot if you figure how to square up the club. There's not that much hand rotation involved with a weak grip. With a strong grip, you also might experience the most amount of hand rotation through impact because your path is gonna be more in to out. Something to consider if you wanna limit the amount of hand rotation, weaken your grip. Now we're gonna observe these grips and how they affect your swing. We'll start off with the strong grip, go neutral and go weak. Just a basic swing test right now. Starting with the really strong left hand, lead hand. This puts the right hand in a very submissive position. Submissive meaning it's rolled under. And in the takeaway, that should make me go a little bit lower and a downswing could cause me to stay lower, swinging more out to the right. I'm going to get a grouping of five shots so we can compare each one and we'll get a measure of consistency out of it. All right, feedback initially from the strong grip that I feel. I feel like the hands rotate more after impact. I can feel at impact the face is a lot more closed and it's slightly de-lofted. So we're looking at a shot that's probably got a lot more in to out swing path. So my hands are getting more involved. The hands will want to return to square, but if you set up like this, they'll want to return here. The hands always want to return to their neutral position here. So. With a, with a really strong grip, we see the face shut down rather quickly, causing the ball to be pulled, or pull draw, or pull hook. Been there, done that, not going back. Our next grip that we're featuring is the neutral grip, the one that is highly recommended by many instructors, many golf professionals. You can't go wrong with this grip. It's just a simple blend of everything you want in your golf grip. Neutral, it's just standard, it's boring, it's perfect. Some things I feel there with the more neutral grip. One, club face isn't rotating as much. At impact, it feels more square. Ball is starting more on my target line. That's a beautiful thing. I'm a strong grip guy, so I'm used to feeling the hands rotate a lot through impact, and that's why I hit those big poles and big hooks a lot of times. But making a more neutral grip has caused my ball to start more straight. It also makes my swing feel different. Different in the sense that it feels like takeaway is a little bit more out in front of me, and when I get to the top, no matter how in I go, the club stays out in front of me too, which is also a good thing. You don't want the club getting too low and behind you, which is something a strong grip can do. Let's dive into the weak grip now. Going totally against the grain, this is the opposite of what I would do. Let's see what happens. Okay, weak grip feels really odd for my swing. Something I'm noticing with the weak grip, it feels like that ball is gonna go right no matter what. Which isn't a bad thing. If you're somebody who pulls the ball, you might wanna try a weaker grip. 
I also feel like in my swing that I'm subconsciously trying to square it up, so I feel like I'm going a little bit more steep into the ball. But that's something that happens when you make a grip change. Your feeling of impact has changed 180 degrees, so now you've got to learn how to hit from this new grip position. So that's affecting my swing, probably negatively, but it's not permanent. It's something I'll figure out a little bit later. But you can see in those swings, there's a clear difference between strong, neutral, and weak. Another thing about the grip I want you to make sure you do before we move on, the position of the thumbs. What do I mean by that? Well, on the grip here, notice how my thumb is slightly off to the side with the lead hand. You want that never straight down. If you put that straight down, unspeakable things will happen to you in your golf game. So off to the side is good. With the right hand, same thing, off to the side. If you're ever straight down with both thumbs, unspeakable things will happen to you in your golf game. Don't believe me? Try it out. Let's dive in to how this trail hand is so important in your golf swing. It affects the takeaway and it affects contact. At impact, you need this trail hand on top because it supplies power down this way naturally into impact. You can actually see that. It's a natural motion. If your right hand or trail hand is off the club, you won't be able to get that same feeling. In fact, you'll end up setting yourself up for scoopsville. Just go off to Dairy Queen, get yourself a nice scooper because that's all you're gonna be doing all day. Scoop, scoop. You might as well hit out of a tub of vanilla ice cream at this point because you're scooping all day long. Right hand position, here's how it affects your takeaway. Strong grip, the right hand faces more away from the target, to the right. Neutral faces the target. Weak faces the opposite direction. Now these all influence your takeaway. Wherever this hand points, it's going to want to go naturally. We should strive for more of a neutral right hand because that enables for you to take the club back perfectly around your body on the proper path. Now if we've got a stronger right hand, it points away from the target, you'll have a desire to take the club lower and more around you, which is that in to out path, that hook bias path, that draw bias path. Similarly, a hand that is pointed for a weaker grip points toward me, encourages more of an outward takeaway, also encourages an out to in path, which is your slice bias path or your fade bias path. Neutral has no bias. Neutral is probably the best grip for somebody who likes to work the ball both directions. It's also a great grip for somebody who wants the same ball fly each time with some relatively good consistency because there's not a whole lot of hand rotation happening after impact. We're keeping the club face square longer. Now I'm going to demonstrate takeaways, the first part of the backswing, with a strong, a neutral, and a weak grip. We'll just hit a few different takeaways. You'll see the right hand position controlling the takeaway. And I'm not forcing this, this is just natural. Amazing that something this small as the grip has a huge effect on your entire golf swing. Starting off with a strong grip. All right, let's move on into the neutral grip, naturally setting me up for this type of takeaway, which is ideal, the club working around your body the perfect amount. See, there's too low, too early is never good because you'll end up doing something like this or you'll end up hooking it the other way. So keep that in mind with the, with the strong grip. I can actually feel naturally the club's coming back. It feels straighter back to me because it's not so low and around. It's actually traveling up the proper path. Lastly, let's go with the weak grip. I feel like the club doesn't want to rotate at all going back. Try this at home if you don't believe me. I'm not forcing these positions, it's just happening. Okay, those felt really solid. Felt like the club was even more out here. Seriously, if you want to know one of the biggest things about how the golf swing works, your right hand, your trail arm, your trail hand, 
almost has 100% control over it. Just how you started at a dress like that. Can you believe that? For those of you who want to see in a little bit more detail how this trail hand impacts a takeaway, here's strong. This is really strong, just to exaggerate. A stronger grip turns that hand over this way and it points. Look where the stronger grip points along this line. There's a lower and inside takeaway. Neutral, point to the target. Weak, points toward me. Stronger, lower and in. Neutral, more around the arc properly. Weak, more out to in. Something as simple as the grip can change your swing tremendously. One last checkpoint, crispiest iron shots ever. Right hand needs to stay on top. Trail hand needs to be on top. Watch this. Crispier than KFC right here. Trail hand on top, pushing down, naturally causing this motion to happen. Hands ahead of the club at impact, very crispy. Look at that, oh man. I couldn't do that with a stronger grip because I'm, I've got, if you have your hands over here, you can't, you have to push down this way. So hand on top takes care of all that work for you. And it's just clean all day long. You can feel the compression. You can feel that right hand on top. Oh, that is beautiful. Woo. Crispier than KFC. All day long too. It's not like this is a one and done. It'll happen all day long. All right, Segudo golfers, Tom Segudo here. Thanks for tuning in this evening. Really enjoyed having you on the show. Hopefully you can get a grip on your life now that you know how to work the grip. That's my whole goal for you. Get a grip on your life, you get a grip on your golf game and your golf swing. Now remember the equation. Golf is life, which means you need to get a grip on your golf game to get a grip on your life. It's a giant circle of happiness. And I want that for you and your golf game, helping you make the most out of the game you love. Check out my online golf school, segudo.golf, if you want to start playing your best golf right now. I look forward to seeing you there in the class.